Hello students, we are going to understand a new chapter today, Gravitation. We will discuss the topics, Kepler's laws, that is Kepler's laws of planetary motion. Then we will see the universal law of gravitation, then the gravitational constant G, then the acceleration due to gravity small g. In the variation in acceleration due to gravity with various parameters then we will see the gravitational potential energy then escape speed from earth and from other satellites then we will learn about the earth satellite and energy of an orbiting satellite then at last we will see geostationary and polar satellites and gravitational field gravitational potential so let us begin kepler gave three laws about the motion of planets before learning about the kepler's laws let us first understand the situation here this is an ellipse these two points are called focus The distance from P to A. This PA is called major axis and BC is called minor axis. O is the point of intersection of major axis and minor axis. Distance OA and OP are same and that is equal to PA by 2. So OA is the semi major axis and same way OB is the semi minor axis. The point P is the closest distance in the motion it is assumed that Sun is at one of the foci. Let us assume that Sun is at this point. P is the closest point from the Sun. It is called perihelion and A is the farthest point from Sun. It is called aphelion. <clears throat> now let us see the first law. It states that all the planets move in an elliptical orbit with the Sun at one of the foci. Initially, it was a misunderstanding that the, all the planets are revolving around Sun in circular orbit. Kepler removed this misunderstanding and said that all the planets are revolving in the elliptical orbit and Sun is at one of the foci. Now, the second law. Second law is also called the law of areas. This states that the line that joins any planet to the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal interval of time. Equal areas in equal interval of time. Let us understand this statement. This is an elliptical path followed by any planet and sun is at one of the foci. Let's say at this point that is sun and planet is revolving around sun in this path. For example, at any time instant, planet is at this point P and after time delta T, it reaches to point P dash. Now, at some other time instant, let's say the planet was at point P1 and after same time interval delta 2, delta T, it reaches to point P2. Now, the area swept by line joining sun and the planet 
this is the line joining sun and planet when mo planet moves from p from p dash this is the area swept out by it and this is the area swept out by planet during the motion from p1 to p2 according to kepler's second law these two areas are swept in same time so this areas let's say that a1 and this is a2 will be same here in general we can see this that at this point the distance from the sun is more so the speed of the planet will be lesser so it will travel a lesser distance in given time now at this point the distance of the sun from the planet is comparatively lesser so the speed will be more so it will travel more distance in lesser time so from p1 to p2 distance is more from p to p dash distance travel is less so ultimately this area will be equal the second law is the consequence of the conservation of angular momentum it can be proved by conservation of angular momentum l how let us see that delta a is given by half into delta r into v delta t because it is almost a triangle and area of triangle is half into base into height the height is the distance from the sun that is r into v delta t so delta a by delta t is equals to half into r into v this r cross v is linear momentum so delta r cross we can write v is equals to p by m because linear momentum p is equals to m into v so v will be equal to p by m r cross p is equal to angular momentum that is l so delta a by delta t is equals to l by 2m because the angular momentum is equals to r cross p now now torque due to central force is zero because at any point f is nd parallel to r if we see the elliptical path at any point this will be the direction of force and this will be the direction of torque so this will be the direction of position vector so at any point this position vector and force are anti parallel to each other so theta will be 180 degree so r cross f will be equal to 0 so if r cross f is equals to 0 then torque is equals to 0 and torque is defined as dl by dt is equals to 0 but we have just derived that delta a by delta t is equals to l by 2m so we can write if linear momentum with respect to time is not zero then so is zero then change in area with respect to time will also be zero 
So dA by dt will be equal to constant. That means the area swept in given time does not change. So second law can be derived using conservation of angular momentum. Now let us see the third law. The third law is the law of periods. It talks about the time period of the planets revolving around the sun. The statement says that the square of time period of revolution of planet is proportional to the cube of semicircular major axis of the ellipse traced out by the planet. If T is the time period of revolution and R is the semi-major axis, then we can write t square is directly proportional to r cube. If we draw graph of t square and r cube, they both are directly proportional. So graph will be straight line. Here remember that r is the semi-major axis. Now let us see some examples based on the Kepler's laws. In the first question it is given that the ratio sorry the distance of the planets from sun are 10 power 13 meter and 10 power 12 meters respectively. What is the ratio of the time periods of revolution? The time period of revolution is directly proportional to t square is directly proportional to r cube. So we can write t1 by t2 whole square is directly proportional to r1 by r2 whole cube. So t1 by t2 whole square is equals to R1 is 10 power 13 divided by 10 power 12 whole cube. So T1 by T2 whole square is equals to 10. So T1 by T2 is equals to 10 power 3 by 2. So this will be our final answer. The ratio of time periods of revolution will be 10 power 3 by 2. In the next example it is given that if the distance between earth and sun were half of its present value then how many number of days will be there in a year. Let us assume that initial distance is r1 so the final distance will be r1 by 2. Initial time period is t1. We want to find the new time period t2. We can write according to Kepler's third law that t square is directly proportional to r cube. So t1 by t2 whole square is equals to r1 by r2 whole cube. So T1 by T2 whole square is equals to R1 divided by R1 by 2 whole cube. So this will give us answer 8. Now we want to find the new time period of revolution that is T2. The original time period of revolution is 365 days divided by T2 whole square is equals to 8. So 
365 divided by T2 is equals to 2 root 2. So T2 will be equal to 365 divided by 2 root 2. So the answer will be nearly 129 days. So this will be the new time period of revolution of the earth if the distance between the sun and the earth is halved. Now in this example, the period of revolution of satellite of an orbit of radius 2r is given t. Now what will be its period of revolution in an orbit of radius 8r? Again, we will use the third equation, third law of planetary motion, that is t square is directly proportional to r cube. So, we can write that t1 by t2 is equals to r1 by r2. This t1 by t2 whole square and r1 by r2 whole cube t1 by t2 whole square is equals to initial distance was 2r then it is changed to 8r whole cube so we can write t1 by t2 whole square is equals to this will be 1 by 4 whole cube t1 by t2 whole square will be equal to 4 cube will be 64. Taking square root on both the side, t1 is given t, let's say t2 is t dash is equals to 1 by 8. So t dash will be equal to 8t. So this will be our final answer. In this example, let A be the area swept by the line joining Sun and Earth during the month of Feb 1991. What is the area swept by line during a typical week of 1991? Here, the 1991 is not a leap year, so the total number of days in a month will be 28. So, if we use the Kepler's second law, that is law of area, then we can write delta A divided by delta t is equals to constant. So we can write delta a 1 upon delta t1 is equals to delta a2 upon delta t2. The area swept out for a month is let's say a and that will be 28 days in a month of 1991. Let's say area swept in a week is A dash and number of days will be 7. So A dash will be equal to 7A divided by 28. So A dash will be equal to A by 4. So this will be area swept by the earth in the week of Feb 1991.